On the eastern tip of Java, the Indian Ocean swell breaks upon the shore, forming some of the most perfect waves in the world. Today, actor Gregory Harrison from California comes to Java to find those waves, along with Rick Rasmussen, former two-time national surfing champ. You know, Rick, I have traveled a long way to find waves before. This one takes the cake. After 8,000 miles, I pray that this place has some waves. Look at this yeah. rock. Can you imagine landing is this, on one is of it those? like this out there? Yeah. Really? The whole, the whole reef is like this. Just look all around you. The whole reef is just... If you land on something like this, what happens to you? You get pretty uh, sliced up, man. Eaten alive, huh? It's going to be difficult. The largest waves almost always arrive with a full moon. We were hoping that tomorrow wouldn't be any different. Rick and his friends had set up a surfer's outpost where we slept under nets to keep away the malarial mosquitoes. Joining us was the world's third-ranked female surfer, Linda DeVoli. Hey, Rick and Greg, let's go. It's 10 foot. Linda was the first one out to catch the morning high tide. Rick! Yeah. Look at this! You were right. Oh, look at this one. See, there's so much more water than there was last night when we were coming in. Look at how, look how at the shape. Look all at the way. shape. They're perfect. They're right. And they're big. I think the swell's bigger. Definitely. It's coming on. Look at that. Shh. Beautiful. That's the bowl right there, right? We gotta take yeah. it off out there. Look at that, just peel. Pull it in. Shh. Oh, that's gorgeous. Come on, let's get our board. Let's get out. Whoa. The high tide in this part of the Indian Ocean lasts only a few hours. After that, the coral reef off Grajigan Bay becomes too dangerously exposed for surfing. The waves are powerful out there. Thoroughly waxing the top of the surfboard is crucial as it greatly increases traction. Now the reef was covered with about three feet of water. It was a long mile to paddle out to where the waves are breaking, and I couldn't paddle fast enough. We were at the far eastern tip of Java, where the Indian Ocean swell first breaks onto the island after rolling across thousands of miles of open sea. The waves usually arrive in sets of six or eight. The lull between each set is when the surfer has to paddle like crazy to get outside the break before being pounded. The quality of a ride depends first on good wave selection. You have to position yourself right and then build up enough paddling speed to catch it. I finally saw the wave I wanted and went for it. At this point, all three of us were still getting the kinks out. Rick was having a difficult time ironing out his angles and moves. Linda was taking a beating as well. Rick's goofy foot style with his right foot forward meant that he could face the wave and see where the curl was breaking behind him. Like most people, Linda and I surf with the left foot forward. With the waves breaking from our right to left, we had to surf with our backs toward the curl. It's a great disadvantage. I learned to surf a long time ago near my home on Catalina Island off the coast of California. But now I was 8,000 miles away, and these waves were a lot more challenging than anything I'd ever ridden before. I think the tide's dropping a lot. The waves are starting to break out further. Woo! Beautiful. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. I think we should uh, paddle back out and walk all the way around because the tide's getting lower and it's pretty dangerous. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I don't really want to walk really on <laughs> All of a sudden, I caught the biggest wave of the day. I was almost free falling down the face. chewed me up and knocked the air out of me, holding me under for what seemed like forever. Fortunately, it let go before I blacked out. God, what happened? That, did your shot cord get ripped off? Oh. Didn't. I got down under for about 30 seconds. Did you? Yeah. I saw you tumble. Took me up over the falls, brought me back up again, over the falls again. Bouncing off the reef. Shot for urgency. Yeah, I got it all over the place. Rick, Rick, you were right. What a Some of the finest waves I have ever seen in my life. I had had a close call, but I was ecstatic. The job of break could be even better. Oh, what a great day. Oh, boy. Fantastic. Incredible. The waves were so good today. Did and boy, did it? I eat it a couple of times, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Got, I don't know something. how I can still be hungry after eating it that bad. <laughs> We don't have that much fish left, so I think we should definitely go out okay, and try to get yeah. at least a few lobsters, you know. Remember that time we got all those lobsters? Right on the other side of the reef, there's this beautiful, beautiful eight, ten pound lobsters, you know, the biggest, biggest around for sure. Really? I can't believe it. It's pretty, it's green, it's paradise. It is paradise. It's great waves, good company. <laughs> all right. It could be really, uh... Good surf tomorrow. Could take up a lot of energy. The next day, I awoke to the thundering reality of every surfing dream I had ever had. Sculpted by a strong offshore wind, the tubes were perfect, wave after empty wave, unfolding just for us. Getting out to them was a difficult task. Timing the lull was more crucial than ever. Even for a champion like Linda, there's always the chance of making a wrong decision or missing a move and getting crunched. We took a rest, recovering from the trip out and making sure our boards were waxed and ready for the test. This is incredible. Look at this. Look at this set. The good set was almost on us, and Rick decided to take the first plunge. day before to tune up. With an aggressive style, Rick gets way back in the wave and takes a lot of chances. By contrast, Linda's a bit more conservative. If a situation is hopeless, she'll wisely bail out instead of waiting to get clobbered. in top form is what surfing is all about. Strength 
is important, as is balance and timing. But the most important thing is to go with the flow, to work harmoniously with the wave, never against it. Rick had these waves wired. in the tube where every surfer wants to be. Oh, this is really good. A giant wave just broke right on my head. Oh, that was a good sized wave. Jeez, that was you gotta make sure you're, you're, when you're turning, you're staying too far out on the shoulder. You gotta, on these waves are so dangerous. When they tube that hard, you have to ride inside of the tube. You gotta stay away all, from that lift. Yeah, you gotta stay away from all the power of the wave, you know? Uh -huh. we surfed our hearts out, I was able to experience the power of nature as never before. Linda and Rick took a break, but I couldn't abandon this surfer's dream, wave after wave, all your own. All right, he's really picking it up. The second day out in this kind of a break. I know, he's never rode waves to make me cool. Boy. He's doing really good. Look at the set coming in behind the one he got. Wow. Boy, that's a beautiful wave. He's getting bigger and bigger by the minute. Right then, an unbelievable set came through. I guess you'd call it my moment of truth. I saw my chance and paddled to catch what had to be the biggest wave of my life. Exhausted, and with the tide dropping, we decided to quit. Oh. We'd have had enough surfing for a year. <laughs> Rick, yeah. I've had enough mean big tubes for, for a year. Oh, if I yeah. could find some lights now, somewhere. I want more. There was lots of pain. Watching the afterglow on the Java Sea, I could hardly believe that